What's up, 11 one youth? It's Max, it's your boy. Um, hope all is well on this really weird Sunday. Um, bummed I don't get to see you guys, and I'm sure you're super bummed you don't get to see me, but I know things kinda suck right now. You can't get toilet paper, you might get coronavirus. I'm sure you guys are pretty bummed that you might have to miss school because of it, but I just wanna encourage you, it could always be worse. And think about this, every one of my friends all their schools have been canceled. They get to go home, they're good. I am the only person whose school has not been canceled. My friends, a lot of their jobs are being like postponed. You know, I, I thought maybe one day I'd risk my life. I thought maybe it'd be for like World War III or something, or maybe like being a missionary, but no, it's I'm risking my life for introduction to astronomy and um, mod pizza, so things could be worse. So my roommate Chris, um, and you could be Christian's roommate. That That's worse than what you're going through, too. I heard that. Oh. Anyways, you guys, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Before we do, like I said, things could be worse. You could be risking your life to go to astronomy class and making pizza. Or things could be worse. You could be one of these guys. Roll the track. Yes! <laughs> Don't pull it. Sweet guys, see, things could be worse. I shouldn't be complaining and joke about it, but all seriousness, I actually am praying for you guys and I hope that all this stuff, I hope it hasn't been stressful for you, but I am praying for you guys that have been, um, praying for you guys' protection so you guys don't get it, and just for your families and all you guys that this could be a time of uh, avoiding stress, which I know can be difficult, but love you guys and uh, hope all is well. If you guys need anything during this time, we'll play Fortnite, want to talk, whatever, need prayer, shoot me a text, we'll chat. Um, anyways, before we get into it, I gotta show you one more thing, I realized I gotta give you guys the world's quickest tour of my house since you guys have never seen it. So here it is. What's up guys? So we're outside, we got this beautiful blue door. The inside, and we got the snowboards on the wall. Um, here's a little dining room. This is where Fortnite goes down, boys. Here's the uh, beautiful living room. Here's the kitchen, nice light from the 80s, waja. Waja. Final part of the casa, a uh, nice little jujitsu garage. Sweet boys and girls, if there's girls watching, sorry. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a small little house. You didn't get to see the yard, pretty sweet backyard. Uh, but let's get into it. With you guys, I like to have a more of a discussion base. You guys know that. I like to ask you guys questions and we talk about it, right? But obviously you can't do this if you're looking at a screen. So I don't want to just talk at you too long. Um, but I have something super interesting. Now we're going to have to get some virtual thing going on where we play the new call of, oh my gosh. I just looked in the reflection and I think my head's been cut off for the entire video. Um, okay. I just went on for the whole thing. You're just gonna have to watch it with my head cut off. Uh. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, oh well. The word stays true whether I have a head or not. All right. So if you guys Want to open up your Bibles? Um, go for it. We're going to be just going over one verse and talking about it and uh, meditating on that. For you guys, it's Ezekiel 36. It's going to be... Here's my Bible. It's, it's somewhat towards the middle. Pretty, pretty close to the middle. Um, Ezekiel chapter 36. I'll give you a second to get there. Once you get to the chapter 36, we're going to be verse 26. So Ezekiel 36, verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone 
and give you a heart of flesh. Okay, listen again. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So, does that mean it's weird? I have, my heart is not made out of stone. What are you talking about? Um, so, I was uh, reading something. This is super crazy. Um, when you get a heart transplant, um, someone gets a heart transplant, let's say I died, so boom, Jacob, you get my heart. Nathan, one of you guys. Um, you guys always hated mint chocolate chip ice cream. Let's just say that for the example. You hated it. But if you guys know me, I love mint chocolate chip ice cream. If you got my heart and the heart transplant, you might start craving mint chocolate chip ice cream. Crazy, right? So there's things you could not really care about before. And if you get, this is not like just an example I'm making up for the Bible. This is a true story. This is, I've read about this. If you get a heart transplant, you can start to crave certain things that the person did before. That's because there's something called cell, cellular memory. Um, so you're going to have cravings that you didn't have before if you get a heart transplant, which is crazy to me. Um, just because that you're going to have a cellular memory, like I said. So, Max, what the heck are you talking about? Why are you talking about mint chocolate ice cream? Um, good question. Uh, Ezekiel 36. God, or He says, I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Of course, we're not going to literally get a heart transplant when we become Christians. And, of course, if you're not a Christian, your heart is not literally made out of stone. What this does mean is God has given us a new heart. And what did I say about a real heart transplant? You get new cravings. What should be happening is the same thing with this, when God gives us a new heart. He, when we decide, God, I want to follow you, I want to be a Christian, it's not just a decision and then you go to church once a week. Our whole heart should be changing. And when your heart changes, when you get that transplant, when the Lord replaces you and gives you a new heart, you get those new cravings. That cellular memory from, from God, right? New cravings, new desires. So it's not just an action change. It's a heart change. We should be looking at things differently. Your heart, you should begin to have your heart broken for things that didn't break your heart before. You should be sad about the kid who's getting bullied at school. Instead of, you used to tease him, now you feel bad for him. You want to stand up for him. You should get excited about being able to Donate money to someone who's in need, where before all you want to do is save your money and buy the newest video game. For me, like, this is an ongoing thing, and I'm not saying I crave all good things. It's not like once you become a Christian, it's just a switch, and you're never going to crave something bad, and you're only going to crave good things. Become, you become perfect. You become an angel. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. But it is a way to evaluate where we're at with the Lord. Because if we just say we're a Christian, and it's been five years now and nothing's changing we're craving the same things we're craving the old evil desires and we're going after them and nothing's changing then we're going to know that heart wasn't re removed right? because it says in Luke um, Jesus is talking he says Lord Lord there are going to be a bunch of people on judgment day so people die and they're going to heaven they're seeing if they get into heaven and they're going to say to Jesus Lord Lord did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not do many mighty works? And Jesus will declare to them, depart from me, I never knew you. So what is that? Let me reword that verse in uh, my own words so you guys can understand it a little bit better. What, what's happening here, these people are dying. They're going to judgment day. So they're finding out if they get to go into heaven. And they're telling Jesus, we did all these amazing things. We, we even did miracles. We're doing miracles in your name. What's going on here? So imagine this would be like if a pastor got to heaven and was saying, like, I served my whole life. I was a pastor of a church. And Jesus is basically telling this person, I'm not talking about Pastor Tim. I'm not trying to get fired here. We're not talking about Pastor Tim. But the point of this is people who did awesome things in the name of Jesus, who said they were Christians, are going to get to heaven and God's going to say, I never knew you. You were doing things for me, sure, but I never knew you. Why am I telling you this? I'm not telling you this to scare you. I'm Well, maybe a little bit. I think it's good to have a healthy fear. I, I want to be uh, a little fearful of this. I'm telling you this because 
just because we go to church, this isn't just for you guys. This is for me. This is for everyone at 11 one This is for every Christian. Just because we go to church doesn't mean we're Christians. We need to constantly be evaluating, looking at ourselves, thinking, is my heart craving those right things? And if it's not, that's okay. Let's work at it. Let's go to change it. But let's not just cruise through life and expect, oh, I prayed the prayer. I went to church. I got baptized. Whatever it was, I'm going to heaven because... It's possible that Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. He wants to know you guys. He wants your heart to change. He wants to have the desires that he desires. He wants for you guys to love what he loves and hate what he hates. And if you're not there, it's okay. Let's work on it. Talk to me. I'll love to walk alongside of you guys. Um, from what I see, you guys seem to be doing great. Um, I don't know what's going on in your heart, but uh, having the privilege of being here as a youth pastor, you guys seem to be some of the most awesome kids I've ever met. You seem way more mature and wise beyond your years. Um, but I don't know what's going on in your heart. I don't know what you're craving. So I just want to give you guys a reminder. Your heart should be craving what that wants. And that just because you say you're a Christian doesn't mean you're a Christian. we got to walk it out. We're not saved by works, but we are saved by that relationship with Jesus. And when we have that relationship, our heart begins to change and those works just happen. So does that make sense? I'll say it one more time. The works themselves are not saving you. Doing good things, feeding the poor, that doesn't get you into heaven. But knowing Jesus, having a personal relationship with him, that does get you into heaven. And when you have that real relationship, your heart changes and you begin to do those good things. It's not that those good things are saving you. It's that knowing Jesus will change your heart and you'll begin to do them. And it'll be something that you don't do out of guilt that you feel like you have to. You'll want to do them. I love you guys. I miss you. I don't know when we're going to be meeting up again. But Pastor Tim will keep you guys updated. Um, hopefully soon. If not, we're going to have to get some virtual thing going on where we play the new call. Of, oh my gosh. I just looked in the reflection and I think my head's been cut off for the entire video. Um, okay. I just went on for the whole thing. You're just going to have to watch it with my head cut off. Uh. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, oh well. The word stays true, whether I have a head or not. I love you guys. See you soon. Peace out.